Hello to all fans of Naruto Lemon. I will post all Naruto Lemon Yaoi, Yuri, or Naruko Lemon stories only on the Boosty channel, because Uncle YouTube condemns this. Therefore, I invite everyone who wants Naruto Lemon content to my Boosty channel. Good luck. <laughs> Naruto woke up with a severe headache. It was as if someone was hitting the back of my head with a jackhammer. The girl tried to open her eyes, but the first attempt was unsuccessful. Naruto tried to remember the last thing she saw before passing out. He and Sasuke fled to Konoha. The shinobi had just finished a mission, were very tired and dreamed of being home soon. The mission was complex and highly classified, so two ANBU captains were sent to it. Kakashi emphasized that no one should know about their task, capturing a dangerous shinobi who must tell him where the artifact capable of producing chakra is kept. The artifact, according to this criminal, was destroyed long ago. Both Naruto and Sasuke believed his words, Kurama sensed, lies very well. Therefore, Uzumaki and Achiha, having written a report for the Hokage, began to expect an answer. They received it a few days later, killed a criminal and returned home. Neither Naruto nor Sasuke's hand wavered. The war changed each of them, Uzumaki stopped looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, and Sasuke left the past in the past and began to live in the present. Naruto temporarily abandoned her dream, she would not be Hokage until she copes with her internal problems and until Sasuke finally recovers from everything that happened. And she's not ready to bury herself in papers until she's completed all the missions. Therefore, the girl joined the ANBU, dragging Sasuke along with her. Kurama was only surprised at the changes that were happening to his Jinchuriki. The captains never made it home. Halfway to the Land of Fire, Naruto felt a terrifying surge of chakra. She only managed to warn Sasuke when she herself plunged into darkness. The last thing she remembers is the scream of the Echiha and the desperate call of the fox. Then her memories of this are cut off. Next is the White Room. Where I am? Karama? But Kyuubi did not answer. The girl rose to her feet, looked around, and in the distance saw an approaching figure. The next moment, Rikudo Sanan appeared in front of her. Old man Rikudo? Naruto Uzumaki. I didn't think we'd meet so soon. The man in white chuckled. I didn't expect at all that we would meet again. Your world is over, Naruto. The technique you fell under completely incinerated all living things. Naruto held her breath. Such is the fate of this world. You saved him once, but you can't do it again. The world had to perish in order for something new and beautiful to appear. Naruto looked at him with a mixture of pain and anger in her eyes. Why am I here? Why am I alive? Nobody wants to let you go. Said the old man. And you deserve a chance to be happy. I can bring you back to life, Naruto, but do you want that? You will find yourself in another world, full of differences from yours. I will place you in the body of the recently deceased Naruto Namikaze so that you can live another life. What are you going to say? What's wrong with Sasuke? And Kurama? She couldn't live without them. She wouldn't be able to exist, knowing that they wouldn't be there for her. This world has its own Sasuke and Kurama. The old man looked at her strangely. I don't need others. I need mine. Naruto chuckled. I refuse. I suspected you would say that. The old man muttered. We will meet you again, Naruto. With these words, Rikudo disappeared into the air, and the Jinchuriki fell and again plunged into pitch darkness. And now she, clearly feeling the headache and her body, tried to understand what was happening here. Naruto was able to open her eyes, the second time. Her body ached a little, but with an effort of will, she rose to her feet and looked around. The girl was in her inner world, definitely, but something was wrong here. And that something is emptiness right in front of her. Usually the fox sat there. Karama? Are you here? I asked the Jinchuriki a question. 
Two red eyes glowed, but Naruto didn't even flinch. A huge red fox showed his muzzle, and then bared his teeth and clicked his teeth. Again you got into something, Uzumaki. Life teaches you nothing. Hubi growled, and Naruto sighed in relief. It's you. I. I talked to Rikudo, he told me everything. While you were passed out, I absorbed the local fox. Kurama said. When you wake up in reality, memories will fall on you, so be prepared. Did I forget to say something? Naruto rolled her eyes. Well? A. Look down. Naruto did just that. However, a girl with two long ponytails, somewhat similar to her, was looking at her. The blonde hair curled at the ends into small curls, the eyes were bright blue, the whiskers on the cheeks stood out, clearly, but something was not right. Karama, am I twelve years old? Naruto asked skeptically, who had not previously noticed the changes in her voice, which became a little softer and childish. Exactly. Naruto clearly did not share the enthusiasm with which the fox said all this. Or was it Schadenfreude? Definitely for sure, gloating, of course, what else could you expect from a demon fox? Is this all news? Your beloved Uchiha is here too. Fox chuckled. Now it's time to wake up. Naruto woke up without a headache, but the memories of the local girl immediately fell upon her. It took the Jinchuriki about half an hour to clear his head and separate his memories from the memories of this girl. Kurama was quiet in his head, so there was nothing stopping him from rethinking all the recent events. Well, she died, like her entire home world. The gods gave her a second chance to be happy, great. But what to do with all this? Considering the girl's memories, the prospects were not very bright. Naruto Namakaze was the daughter of the fourth Hokage and Bloody Habanero, the former Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. She had an older brother, a Jounin of the village, a promising guy. The girl herself was clearly a recluse. Her parents didn't pay attention to her because they thought she was a useless vessel for a demon, although that was not the case at all. Minato thought that his daughter could not do anything at all, but Naruto, secretly from everyone, trained. The girl was a pretty good sensor, mastered the elements of fire and wind a few techniques, but mastering two elements at such a young age is already a great success and few in jutsu, and also had taijutsu skills. Excellent at throwing kunai and shuriken. And she herself was not stupid, she knew a lot, but she was very shy and did not stand out from the crowd of her peers. The girl had no friends, no family as such, it is not surprising that she was a recluse. As a child, she got along well with her brother, they were friendly, until one day the fox tried to break out. The six-year-old girl couldn't bear to hear that voice in her head anymore, couldn't stand it, so she gave up. The fox launched his chakra into her and took control, which is why his older brother suffered. Yoichi received a scar across his entire cheek from the burning chakra of the QB. Minato pacified the fox, but began to despise his daughter for her weakness. A little six-year-old girl, just fighting for her sanity. Kushina could not understand, she projected everything onto herself, compared her behavior. And she couldn't understand how a Jinchuriki could harm her family. From that moment on, Yoichi stopped communicating with his sister, her parents began to pay less attention to her, and the fox's voice insistently sounded in his head. It's no surprise that the girl went crazy and gave complete control to the QB. But the fox didn't have time to do anything, Rikudo Senen appeared. Naruto realized that nothing would be easy. That she will have to fight again, save herself and other people from who knows what. There is only one thing that makes her happy, Sasuke and Kurama are next to her, in this new world for her. Naruto stood up from her bed and looked around the room. It was a small, unremarkable room with a bed, a wardrobe and a table. After rummaging through her memory, the girl learned that under the floorboard near the table, there was a cache of Fuinjutsu scrolls that the Jinchuriki had stolen from her mother several years ago. Uzumaki could only be surprised, because the former owner of the body was not at all as innocent and simple as she thought. She had many secrets and mysteries. The girl went to the closet and opened the door. 
There she saw clothes of approximately the same style and color, everything was gray and black. Although Naruto stopped wearing bright clothes when she became an ANBU, even for them, such a dark wardrobe is too much. Rummaging through the closet, Naruto found, thank Kami red tight breeches, a black t-shirt and a black cape that reached mid-knee. She looked in the mirror hanging on the door and smiled to herself. A little girl with two long tails was looking at her. These ponytails curled into small curls at the ends. After adjusting her rubber bands, Naruto ran to the bathroom to clean herself up. Fifteen minutes later, Naruto, following the memories of the local girl, found the kitchen where her parents and older brother were sitting. They didn't even pay attention to the girl's appearance, and Uzumaki suppressed the urge to curse and yell at her family. Is it possible to treat your child this way? To your own flesh and blood? Naruto categorically did not understand this and is not sure that she will ever be able to understand. While the family had a tense breakfast, Uzumaki tried to figure out how to live further. So what's now? According to recollections, she graduated from the academy in a few months, the girl did not stand out in her studies, she kept herself at an average level. She doesn't have any particular problems at the academy, but some teachers don't like her. Apparently this is because the fox, like in her home world, broke out of the seal and destroyed half of Kanoha. Minato sealed the Kyubi again with the help of the third Hokage. Sarutobi gave his life to save the village and the family of the fourth Hokage. Before getting into the cage again, the fox managed to kill several dozen shinobi, destroy houses, and injure more than a hundred people. Naruto was not despised in the village apparently, the status of the Hokage's daughter affects her, but she has no friends and never has had one. The only one she has ever interacted with is Shikamaru Nara. They didn't have a strong friendship or even just friendship, but Naruto knew she could rely on this shinobi. There was a lot of work to be done, although the former owner did not abandon the body, it was still too weak for Naruto. As Kurama said, some of her abilities remained with her, but others would have to be relearned and developed. The Uzumaki suppressed a heavy sigh. We still had to find out about the situation in the village. As Naruto understood, Minato was very respected and loved, the Uchiha clan was alive, well and prosperous, and Kushina communicated well with Makoto. The head of the clan had two children, Itachi and Sasuke, just like in her home world. They sometimes gathered at Namake's house, but Naruto only caught snatches of conversations as she sat in her room. Sasuke. I remembered Naruto. The girl mentally groaned and began to pray to all the gods so that the Uchiha would not blow his block to pieces. After all, you won't always be happy to wake up among the living dead. The Uzumaki simply hoped that Rakuto had visited Sasuke as well to explain the situation. The Uchiha will not be happy. Without saying goodbye to her family, Naruto left the house. She began to examine the streets, alleys, and houses that came across her path. I tried to remember the old Kanoha from my home world, to understand what had changed, what remained the same. Kanoha, of course, flourished. Minato's wise management did its job, Naruto met merchants, travelers, and shinobi from other villages and countries. Some parts of the village have undergone significant changes, the streets have become wider, the houses are brighter. Much was different. Naruto glanced at the Hokage Rock, this place had not changed. The four faces of the great shinobi looked at her as before. On the way to the academy, Naruto met Itachi. He looked at her briefly, but didn't say anything and walked past, as before. Of course, because Uzumaki didn't even look at him, she walked with her eyes down at her feet, like the local girl did. Databeo. Naruto growled in annoyance. This was completely not in her style, she always walked and looked ahead. Nodded to the people she met, but now. What now? She walked as if she were about to undergo a death penalty, that's serious. Well, it's okay, if she immediately takes off all the masks, someone might suspect something. And she can't get caught like that. Don't let Kami, people think that the fox took over her body, interrogation cannot be avoided. And with such clans as the Uchiha and Nara you need to be very, very careful, 
it's not for nothing that eternal geniuses grow among them. Having reached the academy, Naruto sighed with relief, this building remained the same as she remembers it. The girl entered the building and went up to the desired floor, where her graduation classes were held. The office was noisy as always. Naruto looked around the class and came across a familiar black-haired boy. The Echiha looked at her point-blank, apparently expecting some kind of sign from her. Uzumaki tucked a stray strand behind her ear, and Sasuke sighed in relief. This was their special gesture meaning, I'll cover. They came up with it on one of the missions many years ago. Sasuke touched his nose, in response. This gesture meant the same thing. Uzumaki walked past Sasuke, who was sitting at the first desk, and sat down at her usual place, near the window on the last desk. Shikamaru sat next to her. He put his hands behind his head and closed his eyes. They seemed to be comfortable sitting like that. After the academy, Naruto went to her favorite training ground, she spent time there in her home world and hoped that it would be the same in this world. The training ground was located on the outskirts of Kanoha, almost no one went here, which is why Uzumaki chose this place. A little later she brought Sasuke here too. The training ground became a special place for the two of them, a special, not entirely secret, but such a beloved place. There was no one at the training ground, so Naruto sat comfortably under a tree. Soon Sasuke found her, of course, the Echiha knew where to look for her. Naruto felt his chakra when he had already set foot on the training ground, and realized that her sensory skills needed to be developed in her home world, she was the best sensor in Kanoha. Sasuke, you've come. Naruto smiled, getting to his feet. The Echiha nodded, walked closer to the girl and hugged her. Sasuke hugged her to him like the most precious thing in his life and kissed her temple. What have we gotten ourselves into again? The Echiha asked quietly, still hugging the girl. He buried his nose in her hair, stroking her back, while Naruto, who was slightly shorter than him, buried herself in his collarbone, hugging him across the waist. It's a long story. The girl said, breaking away from Sasuke. They sat under a tree and Naruto began the story. She told about Rakuto, about Kurama, about her family, and her abilities. She told everything without hiding, and the Echiha just chuckled. But Naruto knew him too well not to understand that Sasuke was simply in shock. He doesn't know what to say. They were silent for a while, and then he began his story. Sasuke said that he also met Rakuto Sanin. He told him about his home world and about parallel ones too. However, the Echiha did not want to return to life without Naruto, and then the sage only chuckled. Then he passed out and woke up in his room in the Echiha house. I've never had a headache like this, I swear. I spent about an hour trying to figure out Sasuke's memories here. The boy shared his grief. Naruto nodded understandingly. The Echiha said that his first desire was to destroy the entire clan. He even awakened the second Tomo in the Sharingan. Then he began to complain about his weakness and helplessness. His body was much weaker than in that world, and his eyes were too poorly developed. He had a good command of the element of fire, was the best student at the academy, Naruto rolled her eyes demonstratively, but in the family he was always in the shadow of his older brother. Itachi was the recognized heir to the head of the clan, a genius, the jonin of the village and an exemplary son of his father. His parents were very proud of him and constantly set him as an example for their youngest son. In the end, not loved by anyone and wanting to prove his strength, Sasuke was constantly angry and irritated. He tried to get around his brother, but he couldn't, and a strong desire to destroy Itachi settled in his soul. I haven't felt this angry in a long time, Naruto. This child was brought to such a state that he did not want to live in the same house with his parents, with Itachi. He was a little angry ball of negativity and pain. And I, I recognized myself as a child. Only instead of the desire to surpass, I had a desire to take revenge. Sasuke, like Naruto, had no friends. He didn't want to communicate with anyone he pushed everyone away from him. Only the girls hung on to him, as before at the academy Naruto was convinced of this herself. 
In the end, the soul of the twelve-year-old boy was completely mired in darkness. It was then that Rakuto Sanon caught her and prevented the little boy from losing his soul. But he didn't want to live, he wanted to retire in order to stop experiencing all these terrible feelings that had been with him for several years. That's how Sasuke ended up in this world. Rikudo didn't say anything about you, and then I woke up. I wanted to go looking for you, but I remembered what I would see at the academy. Sasuke shared. Naruto smiled and rested her head on his shoulder, intertwining her fingers. Sasuke is nearby. Native and alive. There was nothing Naruto was happier about in her life than a second chance at happiness with him. Their relationship started out strange. After the war, both Sasuke and Naruto were going through hard times, even though he saved the world, Uchiha was unpleasant to the people, and Uzumaki was saddened by the weight of guilt and loss. Sasuke spent several months in prison until Kakashi released him into Naruto's personal custody. The Uzumaki, of course, took control of her friend so that he would not escape again. All it took was for her to persuade Hitaki, he wanted to send Sasuke on a long mission. At first, of course, the former nuke mean was under constant control of the ANBU, but after a few years the surveillance completely disappeared. The Echiha joined the Hokage squad along with his friend Uzumaki. Naruto herself could not recover for a long time after the loss of her friends, many gave their lives in the Fourth Shinobi War. Nijikuen, Shikamaru's father, died, and shortly before that, Jiraiya. Many good people died in this terrible battle, and Naruto did not take the loss well. Only caring for her best friend and Kurama helped her hold on. Sasuke, with all his quarrelsome, gloomy character, tried, in his own style, of course, to support Naruto, he was simply there when needed. He and Sasuke spent a lot of time together. Sakura, who had never completely forgiven the Echiha, moved away from the team, started a family, but continued to work at the hospital, being the best doctor in Kanoha. Team 7 was still the strongest in the village, but were they the same team as before? Naruto and Sasuke, meanwhile, were training, although it seemed much stronger. And then one day Kakashi invited Naruto to join ANBU. They were talking about Naruto's dream that would never come true when Six suggested it. He said that Uzumaki couldn't live without a goal, so he gave her something more interesting than simple missions. He allowed Uzumaki to think, but the girl herself had already decided everything. What's wrong with Sasuke? You know that I won't leave him. The Jinchuriki asked firmly. I really don't know. The Hokage muttered quietly. If he agrees, then the road to ANBU is open for him. I think he himself was tired of this constant surveillance of him. Believe me, he will definitely agree. A truly demonic smile appeared on Naruto's face, one that Kurama himself would envy. So Naruto and Sasuke ended up in ANBU, and a few years later, they became captains and took teams under their leadership. The authority of these two grew every day, Sasuke earned more and more respect and trust from the shinobi, and their relationship continued to develop. There was no unexpected rethinking of feelings, there was no drama, no scandal. Just at one moment. Naruto realized that no one had ever been as dear to her as Sasuke Uchiha. And the representative of the great clan himself realized long ago that he had found the meaning of his life, this is Naruto. Being unromantic, quarrelsome and hot-tempered natures, Naruto and Sasuke did not make something secret or forbidden out of their feelings. They simply acknowledged them. Five years after the war they kissed. The first time we really kissed. This happened at the training ground, which later became their place. And there was nothing unusual at that moment, Naruto, as usual, was sarcastic and snapped when Sasuke pulled her towards him and kissed her. It was not an innocent kiss, they bit each other like hungry animals. And everyone felt that now everything was as it should be. Nothing changed then either. Naruto and Sasuke continued to fight, argue, and fight, but the reconciliations became more intimate, more passionate than they had been before. And in general, the last tension disappeared from their relationship, leaving room for a simple feeling of happiness. A year later, the couple moved in together, although they already lived several houses away from each other. 
Many people really didn't understand how Naruto and Sasuke could meet after everything that happened. Sakura, having learned about their relationship, gave them a whole lecture, and then distanced herself even more from the team. Uzumaki suspected that Haruno was still in love with the Sharingonist. Some in the village were surprised to learn that they had not met before. Hataki said that everything was leading up to this. There were enemies and envious people on their way, but they were always together. No obstacles could separate these two, not even the destruction of their home world. How is the family? Sasuke asked, while his girlfriend practiced strikes with the clone. Naruto was very happy when she found out that the girl mastered this technique several years ago, she spied on how her older brother trained. Nothing new. They still barely notice me. Although Kushina still sets the table for me, surprisingly. Uzumaki answered sarcastically, dispelling the clone with a precise blow to the stomach. Sasuke, meanwhile, was studying the family's scrolls. They have been training at the training ground for two weeks. They have been in this world for two weeks now, and it seems they have begun to get used to it. Sasuke no longer wants to kill the entire clan upon seeing one of his own, and Uzumaki has stopped reacting to family relationships. Yoichi greeted her a few times when they bumped into each other in the hallway, but nothing else. Naruto even had the thought of leaving his father's house, so to speak, but she quickly dismissed it, Minato would begin to be indignant, panic, and send her to be checked. She doesn't need that. You've almost exhausted yourself, you've been studying all day. Enough. Sasuke said, closing the scroll. Naruto sighed heavily, scattered some of the clones, and left the rest to master Fuenjutsu and expand the chakra channels. Inside her, Kurama also did this at night, gradually restoring the destroyed and depleted chakra channels left after the rampage of the local fox. I'm used to other loads. Naruto sighed. Even though the girl trained, she's still too weak. Well, she was clearly stronger than you at that age. The Echiha chuckled. Themes. Dobe. Sasuke retorted calmly. Uzumaki looked at him, and then lay down on his shoulder. She closed her eyes, immediately plunging into memories. Her entire childhood and youth flashed before her eyes, her eternal quarrels with Sasuke, her pranks, her friendship with Sakura, her work with Jiraiya. She felt so sad at the thought that she had lost everything. She lost everyone she cared about. The home world was destroyed. And no one knows what her fate will be like here. What will happen to this world? Will there be a war? What's wrong with the Sanin, Gara? Are Danzo and other unpleasant individuals who caused a lot of problems still alive? Naruto didn't even notice that she started crying. Her last tears were shed at the funeral after the war almost twelve years had passed since she last cried. And now bitter tears were dripping from her eyes, tears of despair, tears of loss. Naruto had lost an entire world that she had saved too many times. She lost friends who had always been with her. She lost her home and was left with only Sasuke and Kurama. There was no one else. Cry, you will feel better. Said the Echiha in that same gentle tone that only appeared when talking to Naruto. They're all dead, Sasuke. The Jinchuriki said quietly, burying her nose in her friend's neck. He continued to stroke her back, allowing her to let go, to be weak. I know. Naruto didn't even notice how all her clones disappeared. Fatigue, emotional exhaustion, and the severity of recent events fell on her at once, so the girl fell asleep on her friend's shoulder after five minutes of convulsive sobs. And at that moment, looking at the helplessness and weakness of his beloved, Sasuke Uchiha promised that he would never give up this person, be it Rakuto Sanin or the God of Death. He will protect her, he will be by her side, he will not leave her. After all, the Uchiha are the most loyal clan of all. And they love Uchihas only once in their life. Uzumaki, you cannot be corrected. The Uchiha barked during another altercation with the girl. They were now at their training ground, training intensively. A full month and a half has already passed since their arrival in this world. Little changed in the lives of Naruto and Sasuke, their families still treated them disgustingly. 
However, instead of causing scandals, doing things that shouldn't be done, or making hasty decisions, the two shinobi simply trained. Naruto didn't want Minato to suspect anything or for Kushina to start panicking about the fox, and Sasuke just didn't see the point in proving anything to his father, only Itachi notices Fugaku. And if Makoto, who loved her children equally, could not do anything, then Sasuke will not try. For now, anyway. Relations with my brothers were not the best. And if Sasuke, driven by fears that Itachi would suspect something if the younger one suddenly thawed, did nothing, Naruto simply did not yet see a chance to realize his desire to communicate with Yoichi. He constantly disappears on missions, and when he is at home, his parents are home too. Things are better with training, the Uchiha has developed a third Tomo, and is now intensively training his eyes. Sasuke also builds muscle mass, one of his clones trains taijutsu and throws kunai and shuriken, another does ninjutsu, and the third meditates and expands chakra channels. Unlike Naruto, who created several dozen clones, he could only afford three. Uzumaki, while creating those same clones, trained taijutsu, throwing, ninjutsu, fuinjutsu, and red scrolls on wind techniques, which she found in the girl's hiding place. Also in this cache were fire and water techniques. The local Naruto had been finding these scrolls on her bed for about four years. The girl did not know who her secret admirer was, but she hid the scrolls under the floorboard and periodically studied them. It must be said that the training was beneficial, Naruto became much better at taijutsu, through kunai and shuriken better, mastered several wind techniques and improved her fuinjutsu skills. In her native world, she was one of the best in this, she was not going to lag behind. Kurama says that her channels have been restored and strengthened, so once a week Naruto allows himself to train with Fox Chakra. Sasuke and Naruto spar together. The Echiha develops his Jinjutsu, but the Uzumaki, on the contrary, learns to resist it. We can say that there is success, they are increasing their strength, but compared to the strength in their home world, their current strength is simply nothing. What do you want from me? Uzumaki was indignant in response to her friend's attack. They had been arguing for about half an hour about training. Sasuke tried to hammer into his friend's head that she needed more sleep, but Naruto just snorted. What are you doing yourself? You're not sleeping yourself. I cannot sleep. The Echiha spat out, and Naruto froze. Of course, she suspected that something was wrong with her lover. But she knew him as well as herself. If she starts asking questions, Sasuke will simply send her to high. So she waited until he himself deigned to share. Well? Is there anything you want to tell me? Naruto and Sasuke stood opposite each other, crossing their arms over their chests. If this happened in their home world, then all the people would scatter within a kilometer radius, such powerful ki would come from the two strongest shinobi. Now the two ki simply collided, but their strength was still too small to scare anyone in the village. I cannot sleep. In fact, for me, among the living dead. I keep remembering that day when Itachi. And even though now they are all alive, the clan is thriving, but I can't do anything with myself. The Echiha sighed. Ki was asleep, Naruto and Sasuke sat under a tree. As soon as I close my eyes, I see all this blood and Itachi. Naruto didn't like seeing Sasuke so broken, weak and tired. After the war, when everything had finally settled down, the Uchiha began to open up to her. This is how Naruto found out that every year he celebrates the anniversary of the massacre of the Uchiha clan. He doesn't forget his brother either. The Uzumaki then began to recognize her friend. First. For real. Sasuke was a complex person. He hid his feelings, deep inside, did not show real emotions, meanwhile his soul was torn to pieces. Naruto learned to read her friend, look into his soul, see sincere emotions. It happened in a past life, Sasuke. Naruto sighed. Yes, it was not easy for her to accept the fact that all her loved ones died, but she did it. Uzumaki did not forget, but she tried to adapt to her new life. They are truly given a second chance to be happy. Now everything is different. Naruto pulled the Echiha towards her. 
He went down a little on the ground and lay on his beloved shoulder. It's not your fault, I've told you about this many times. I am to blame for Itachi's death. Then fix it. You have a chance. Naruto said firmly. You'll think about it, but now, get some sleep. You really need sleep. The Echiha buried his nose in her neck and hugged her across her stomach. The girl herself gently stroked his back, thereby calming him down and giving him support. Sasuke fell asleep a few minutes later, and Naruto was lost in her sad thoughts. After they both spoke out it must be said that Sasuke held out for a long time Naruto hoped that things would get better. Meanwhile, there are less than two weeks left until the Genin exam. As you know, children, the Genin exam took place yesterday. Irika sensei began as soon as he entered the office. And, congratulations, you all passed it. Naruto smiled unnoticed by everyone. Shikamaru, sitting next to him, yawned and closed his eyes. Apparently Irika's speech wasn't very interesting to him. Naruto was confident that she had passed the exam satisfactorily. At least she didn't fail him like she did the first time. The girl didn't want to stand out too much, so she wrote the test with a solid C, although she knew all the answers perfectly well, she still remembers how Kakashi forced her to learn all this after the war. She passed the throwing test well, the clones, Kami, you should have seen the faces of the inspectors, when she created the shadow ones, also well. In principle, she expected that she would end up on the same team with Sasuke, but who knows how everything will turn out in this world. The Echiha himself, who would have doubted it, passed the exam, with flying colors. Now I will announce the lists of teams. However, I have to make an announcement, this year, Hokage-sama decided to conduct some kind of experiment. And this is where it got interesting. Even Shikamaru opened his eyes. If the experiment is successful, then this will subsequently become a permanent practice. Even more interesting. As you know, a team is usually divided into three people, and it is headed by one sensei. This year everything will be different. Each team will be assigned two captains. Naruto raised an eyebrow in surprise, Nara chuckled next to him. They exchanged glances with the girl and continued listening. All clear? Now your captains will appear here, and then I will announce the lists. Interesting. Said Shikamaru. Naruto was about to answer him, but she was interrupted by the village Jonin appearing out of thin air. Uzumaki began to examine each of them, recognizing some, Asuma, Kurinai, Kakashi, Yoichi. Yoichi? What? Naruto had no idea that he could be the new captain candidate. Seeing Kakashi among the Jounin, Uzumaki began to hope for the old composition of team number 7. Even though the local Sakura was terribly annoying, still hanging on to Sasuke and competing with Ino, she was their usual teammate. Naruto continued to scan the newly arrived Jounin, trying to find out something. Don't recognize anyone? Kurama asked unexpectedly. So, team, Irika began, and Naruto fixed her gaze on the guy next to Kakashi. Vaguely familiar Shrek's faces, scars on the face, an eye patch. Your mother. Uzumaki cursed as realization hit her. She scanned the Jounin's chakra again and realized that it was undoubtedly him. She remembered this shinobi very well, and even though his chakra in this world had some changes, Naruto had no doubt this was Abito Uchiha. Abito looked around the entire audience with an attentive and tenacious gaze. His eyes darted from one to the other, memorizing the genin. He briefly looked at Sasuke, then at Naruto, and turned his gaze to Shikamaru. Team number 7, Sakura Haruno, Ino Yamanako, and Kiba Inazuka. At that moment, Shikamaru almost fell out of his chair. Actually, just like Naruto. What's going on in this world? The usual Ino Shikacho seems to have been interrupted in the 16th generation. Not otherwise, Minato has gone crazy this year. Commanders, Asuma Sarutobi, and Karina Yuhi. Each team left with its commanders. There were fewer and fewer people. Team number 10, Naruto Namikaze, Sasuke Uchiha, and Shikamaru Nara. Naruto and Shika, sitting next to each other, looked at each other, 
and they looked equally stunned. Sasuke gave his lover an equally surprised look. Commanders, Kakashi Hitaki and Abito Achiha. Better and better. Naruto mentally snorted. Kakashi and Abito looked at each other, pointed upward and disappeared. The genin were not taken aback, Sasuke went out the window and walked along the wall of the academy to climb onto the roof, Naruto followed him, so Shikamaru had no choice but to follow his teammates. Iruka thought that this was a very strange team. Well, hi, Genin. Abito began when the children sat on the roof. The captains were pleasantly surprised when the guys came to them like shinobi, walking along the wall. Naruto looked at Abito with some pleasure, he shone in this world. He must have really had a happy life, because the smile never left the guy's face. And Uzumaki felt a strange feeling of satisfaction, at least somewhere this person found happiness. But something else scared her, what did the future have in store for her? I am Abito Achiha. Next to me, as you already understood, is Kakashi Hitaki. The fair-haired man nodded his head and continued to look at the sky. Naruto noted that one of his eyes was closed, just like in his home world, and Abito had an eye patch over his eye. It must have been that Minato's team got caught in the rubble after all, and Rin managed to perform an operation on the boys. How Abito remained alive, Naruto couldn't even imagine. The memories of the local girl gave nothing, she had never even communicated with Kakashi, and had no idea who Abito was. Obviously, the Hokage didn't tell his daughter anything. Amazing. I know that you are surprised by this distribution, but we ourselves were no less amazed when we saw the lists. Although Naruto suspected that Abido, as an Uchiha, was assigned to her to keep an eye on her and the Kyubi. And who could Minato trust to monitor the Jinchuriki, if not his students? However, Uzumaki did not understand at all how Shikamaru ended up next to them. How could Minato break the usual Inoshikicho team? But since we are now one team, we should get to know each other better. Tell us about yourself. You have files on us. Shikamaru spoke up. You know everything. Why? We only know what the academy gave. Kakashi said. But what can you tell about yourself personally? And you? I decided to ask Naruto. Since we are one team, as you said, then everything should be fair. You are for us, we are for you. Kakashi looked at Naruto a little surprised, but didn't say anything. Eventually, Naruto decided it was time to do something about her behavior. She decided to gradually remove the mask of a recluse and spineless creature. It is almost impossible to do this in a family, but a team is another matter. Let Kakashi and Abido, she is sure, tell everything to the Hokage, this information did not pose a big threat to Naruto. A new team means a new life, and it needs to prove itself somehow. You're right, Naruto. The Uchiha chuckled. I have a wife and a son, he is nine now. I'm a Jounin of the village, I used to be on Minato's team. Abito said. You didn't say anything that wasn't in your file. Sasuke chuckled for the first time during the conversation. Abito narrowed his eyes at his clanmate. Hmm. I love waffles and ramen, and I dream of becoming Hokage. But this is already a strong statement. Naruto just mentally snorted, remembering herself, she also dreamed of becoming Hokage. The fact that I love you doesn't concern me. What I dream about is just my dream. Kakashi reported briefly, and Naruto suppressed the urge to groan. Amazing. Sasuke, start. Abito smiled. Hmm. The Echiha made a sound, I love few things, and people. I trust only myself and one other person, and my dream does not concern you. Kakashi exchanged glances with his comrade, and then asked. Who else do you trust? You'll find out. All this time, Sasuke continued to just sit and look into Obito's eyes. In turn, the mentor, having looked into the boy's eyes once, no longer wanted to see what he saw there. It was the look of a man who had known a lot of pain, who had lost everything in this life. And Abido, of course, knew how much he loved his youngest son Fugaku, but he didn't think that Sasuke's life was so bad. When? 
when the time comes. Shikamaru, what do you say? Kakashi asked a question. I know that you are surprised and are trying to understand how you ended up here. Just ask your father, he will explain everything to you. What do you want to know about me? Nara asked lazily. I won't tell you anything new, I don't love anything, I don't have a dream. Shikamaru, everyone has a dream. Abito said skeptically. And everyone loves something or someone. Then why voice obvious facts? I love something or someone. Shikamaru. Kakashi sighed, and then turned his gaze to Naruto. Well, Naruto, it's your turn. I love little, I trust few people, and my dream is too abstract. Naruto reported briefly, but timidly. The captains shook their heads. Having told the children that tomorrow, there would be a test, the captains released them. The children shrugged and jumped off the roof. Shikamaru, however, sighed heavily before this. What do you think? Abito asked, looking after Sasuke as he left. Kakashi's eyes followed Naruto and Shikamaru, who walked in the same direction. Interesting genin. Kakashi said briefly. What should we do with them? I have no idea. I'm worried about the Echiha. Shared by Abito. I'll look after him. I'm Naruto. A very strange girl. Although this is not surprising. Hataki looked at the clouds. In my opinion, Nara is the most adequate. And what was Minato Sensei thinking when he approved such a team? Who gave him the idea? Speaking of him. It's time for us to go to the Hokage. At night, when Naruto had settled all her affairs, reread all the scrolls and prepared everything for tomorrow, she went down to her subconscious to talk a little with Kurama. The fox had been working hard lately to restore the damaged chakra channels that were preventing Naruto here from distributing energy properly. Apparently, the local fox did not spare Naruto at all, since he brought her body to such a state. And Uzumaki herself was immensely grateful to her father, her own father, who really saved her life and saved her from the too strong influence of the Kyubi. As the fox said, the seal of this world was weaker. This explains the fact that Kurama was not in a cage. Most of his chakra was blocked, but he was still strong. The Kyubi here affected Naruto mentally and physically, gradually destroying her and destroying her personality. A terrible fate. When Naruto got there, she saw Kurama, sleeping, wrapped in his tails. The girl snorted quietly, causing the fox to stir. He opened one eye, yawned, let out a low growl, stood up to his full height and looked at the Jinchuriki. Well, what are you doing here, two-legged misunderstanding? Kurama sighed. I came to you, ungrateful creature. I thought you were bored here. Yeah of course. I slept great and you ruined everything. The fox snorted, but there was no indignation or irritation in his voice. I never spoil anything. Kurama's loud laughter was the answer to her ridiculous statement. Oh, come on. Dada Bayo. Better tell me how we're doing here. Stop laughing, Kurama. Made me laugh, Uzumaki. In the end, the fox calmed down and began the story, basically, I fixed everything. Now you need to develop control. Naruto here was good, he even knew how to walk on walls, but his chakra consumption was wrong. Too much is wasted. Naruto just nodded her head thoughtfully. You've already adjusted your control and flow once, you'll do it again. It will be easier now. The level of the girl here was much better than your level at her age. It wasn't all that bad. Everything was just disgusting. The fox disputed her statement. As soon as you improve your control, you can start mastering the raise again. This will also be easier than before. Then we'll see what to do with you. What's with the seal? Naruto asked, looking straight into the fox's eyes. Need to find the key again? There is no need to look for him. This seal is based on a lower level of Fuinjutsu. You will need to find the scroll and learn the seals of liberation. True, your body is not ready yet. You will need to draw my chakra into you. 
and there's only one place where you can do it safely. Data Bayo. Of course, Turtle Island. It's too early to think about it. First you must regain your strength. At least the level you had at 16. Then we will think about how to open the seal. I think either Minato or Jiraiya should have the scroll. Kami, you still need to master the summoning. The girl sighed. Your toads again. Hubie growled. A pure aura of discontent and contempt emanated from him. I would try to find another call that is close to you. Yeah, and it will take me to who knows where. Naruto snorted. Although maybe you're right. We need to think about this. Of course, I'm right. Kurama chuckled. Naruto rolled her eyes, sighed heavily and walked over to her demon. He sank to the floor, lay his head on his front paws, and wrapped his tails around the Jinchuriki's body. Naruto sat comfortably next to the fox. They often spent their time like this after the war. When Naruto felt an urgent need to distance herself from the outside world, she descended into her inner world, where Kurama was already waiting for her. The fox joked about her, beamed with sarcasm, but always accepted her, although he never stopped being indignant. Uzumaki lay down by his side when she felt a soft touch with her tails. Kurama protected her from the outside world. As he does now. Sleep, Uzumaki. Even your empty head needs rest. I just won't comment on anything. I will ignore you and your unflattering remarks about me. Marvelous. Under Naruto's quiet snoring, Kurama also closed his eyes. After all, even he had a hard day. The genin arrived at the training site on time, it was very early in the morning and why can't Kakashi and Abito sleep? The meeting was at a very ordinary training ground on the outskirts of Kanoha, where Naruto herself had been two or three times in her entire life. When Uzumaki arrived, Shikamaru was already lying under the tree, and Sasuke was sitting on a branch. He examined the kunai, twirled it on his finger, and tossed it into the air. The Echiha nodded at her and continued his work. Naruto shook her head and sat down next to Shiki. Taking out a scroll. Of course, Kakashi-sensei was late, but Abito. Have they really gotten along so well that their habits are now the same? While reading, she did not notice how time passed, and almost missed the question Sasuke asked Shikamaru. Did you ask your father about the distribution? I asked. Nara said lazily. He said it was all our parents' idea. They want to see how we will work outside of the usual Inoshikicho team. Hokage-sama, supported. He didn't have enough experiments with mentors. Naruto muttered quietly. Sasuke and Shikamaru hummed in agreement. Then there was a comfortable silence. The Uzumaki felt completely comfortable in the company of these people, who also seemed not to care about the absence of commanders. Several hours passed like this. The sun had already risen high, the sounds of conversations and work could be heard from the village, but there were still no mentors. Naruto, without hesitation, decided to scan the area to confirm her suspicions, even for Kakashi, being five hours late was too much. She expanded her sensory abilities as far as she could and began scanning the area. She felt the shinobi running by, even caught echoes of the chakra of Kushina and Yoichi and his team. Soon she felt the chakras of Kakashi and Abito, they were not far from them, went deep into the nearest forest. She quietly looked around the surrounding area to understand approximately where the mentors could be located. They couldn't do it from behind, so it was either on the right or on the left. Naruto tensed a little more and determined the approximate location of the Jounin. They were located to the right of the training ground, about a hundred meters from the Jenin. The Uzumaki snorted quietly and signaled for Sasuke to come down. The Echiha, obviously, had already guessed everything, so he didn't make any sudden movements, and came down a few minutes later. Shika opened his eyes, with interest. I understand. Nara smiled. I've been waiting for about 30 minutes for it to reach you. I started thinking about this three hours after we were here. I had to confirm my guesses. Naruto said quietly. Nara opened both eyes and looked at her. 
You're a censor, I should have guessed. Shikamaru nodded to himself. What we are going to do? Shall we say that they were discovered? Obviously, even this genin decided to test his teammates. No, why? Let them sit and watch. The Echiha chuckled. They are testing our endurance. And teamwork. Uzumaki added. All this time, her head was turned towards Shikamaru so that neither Kakashi nor Abito could read her lips. Sasuke simply sat with his back to the side of the forest where the jonin were, covering Nara with his head. The representative of the brilliant clan himself only smiled approvingly at their words and actions. Shall we continue to sit? He asked. Yes. Naruto nodded. She saw clear approval in Shikamaru's gaze. Naruto did not completely leave her image, but gradually revealed herself to him. Someday, Naruto is just sure, she and Sasuke will tell their story to Shikamaru. But this will only happen when they completely trust him. When they will be a single team. And I brought us some food. H.M.? The Echiha chuckled skeptically. I assumed that we would be delayed. Naruto took out a scroll out of nowhere and opened it. Fresh, still warm food appeared next to the guys. I didn't know what you were eating, so I brought a little bit of everything. Of course, Naruto knew very well that Sasuke loved her, but she didn't know about Shikamaru. She specially grabbed a plate of aromatic tomato salad for the Echiha. The representative of the great clan immediately took the plate and began to eat, when everyone else also began to eat. We'll work together. Shikamaru concluded. Sasuke gave the girl a sly look, and Naruto smiled. An interesting life ahead. After the Genin ate, they went back to their business, Naruto continued to read the scroll, Shikamaru went to bed, and Sasuke decided to train. At first, he warmed up, but thought that all this was not enough, so he looked at his beloved. Naruto, feeling Sasuke's gaze on her, rolled her eyes. The Echiha stared at her but the girl stubbornly refused to do anything, so she simply grinned. Naruto, get up. Let's see what you can do. Sasuke finally said. Shikamaru opened his eyes with interest and even stood up from his reclining state. We are from the same class, Uchiha. Nara chuckled. We fought. I didn't fight Naruto. Sasuke said, going through the memories of the local boy. Uzumaki put the scroll aside and approached her lover. You're just bored, Sasuke. Nara said cheerfully. We don't stand out, Uzumaki said with only her lips, approaching the boy. He blinked, and that was it. The pair stood opposite each other, Shikamaru rising to his feet to get a better look at his teammates. The Echiha started first. He formed a series of seals and then blew out a medium-sized fireball. Of course, this ball collided with another one a little smaller. A huge wall of fire rose into the air. Shikamaru had to jump away and climb a tree to avoid being turned into a rotisserie chicken. Naruto was the first to break the technique. She had to jump back a few meters to prevent the residual effects from frying her. Then Uzumaki, without hesitation, created two clones that threw her into the air, from where she launched a wind blade at Sasuke. The Echiha, thanks to his Sharingan, noticed an almost imperceptible flow of wind, so he left as a replacement, leaving a chopped piece of wood in his place. Next was Sasuke's move, he made a series of seals and sent fiery bullets at Naruto, and then launched a lightning bolt. Uzumaki was not taken aback, instead of herself, she left a clone, who safely took the blow and disappeared. Sasuke and Naruto simultaneously launched fireballs that collided again. This time their techniques were almost the same size Sasuke decided not to invest too much chakra. Of course, during his stay in this world, he increased his reserve quite decently it was impossible to stand out too much. Naruto realized this too, so they both soon broke the technique and looked at each other. Well, it turns out you are stronger than you might think. The Echiha grinned. Naruto suppressed the urge to snap at Sasuke, she couldn't, they were being watched. She had already taken off her mask enough. For the first time. It was impressive. 
Shikamaru said, jumping from the tree. Although I would have done things differently in some moments. And now they worked like a real team. Nara began to explain to them their mistakes, which Naruto and Sasuke already knew. Uzumaki listened carefully to her teammate, once again becoming convinced of the genius of his brain, and Sasuke himself proposed other strategies, which were later discussed. Even the Jinchuriki put in a few suggestions that were approved by Shikamaru and not rejected by the Echiha. Another hour passed like this. And then Shikamaru, seriously, Naruto didn't expect this from him, suggested that the three of them fight. Everyone for himself, everyone against everyone. Naruto and Sasuke supported his idea, no one knows how long the Jounin will decide to test them, but they were terribly tired of just sitting. Nara was the first to make his move, he put his hand to the ground and launched shadows, which immediately captured the rest of the genin. Sasuke made a sharp release of chakra, and Naruto, on the contrary, cut off the current. Shikamaru's technique fell asleep, the genin went in different directions. The Uchiha and Uzumaki looked at each other and simultaneously put their hand to the ground, before making several seals. Two large cracks appeared along the ground. They were moving towards Shiki, so he had to jump into the air. A flat hole formed in the place where he stood. Perfect synchronization of the amount of chakra. Shikamaru said in surprise, landing next to Sasuke. They simultaneously sent a stream of fire towards Uzumaki. However, when the equipment was sleeping, there was no one in the girl's place. Naruto showed up behind them, causing all three to clash in taijutsu. Uzumaki and Echiha tried not to stand out, Sasuke showed the same level as at the academy, and Naruto was slightly higher than Shikamaru. As a result, the genius and the Jinchuriki teamed up against Sasuke. The two of them began to attack the Echiha, whose eyes glowed brightly red in order to keep track of the genin, he had to turn on his Sharingan. Even if the speed of their attacks was low, there were many techniques. As long as Sasuke could remember his lover, she always made a lot of movements in her taijutsu. But he hasn't had to fight against his own Shikamaru for a very long time, so he can't even remember his taijutsu. Surprisingly, Naruto and Shikamaru worked together immediately. They found the ideal balance of strength and agility, techniques and defense. At one point everything stopped everyone was for himself. The genin fought in taijutsu, and then the kunai rang. After 15 minutes of this rhythm, Shikamaru began to feel tired, his reserve was several times less than that of these two. So he made a clever move that put Naruto and Sasuke on their backs. Of course, the move wasn't too bad for these genin, so they rose to their feet after a second. It was smart. The Echiha chuckled, brushing off his pants. Shikamaru just grinned and sat down under a tree to rest. Naruto and Sasuke did not feel tired, but decided to support their comrade. They sat down on either side of him. The three genin closed their eyes and, surprisingly, fell asleep. Uzumaki went down to the fox and lay down near his tails. Kurama, without opening his eyes, entangled his jinchuriki with his tails. Let him sleep. He decided. We will talk? Or how? Abito asked Kakashi sitting next to him. He had been looking thoughtfully into the distance for about an hour, since the genin finished their fight and fell asleep. I am surprised. Hataki said. I didn't think that something worthy would come out of this team. They are all quite different. And I didn't like it right away. I had no doubt. You were worried about Naruto though. Still. Kakashi sighed. But today I saw that everything is not as bad as it seems. She's just an introverted girl. I think she will change in the team. The copy man nodded to himself. How do you like the Echiha? He needs to develop his eyes. But he's a pretty strong guy for his age. And reasonable. Although arrogant, he was not as Irika described him. There's something about this Sasuke. He stands out among the other Echihas. Even taking his brother Itachi as an example, they are completely different. Abito finished. The team turned out to be interesting, in fact. Yes, and Nara was surprised. 
A very cunning and smart boy, like everyone else from his clan. I would say one of its best representatives, and I knew Nara a lot. Kakashi said again. Have you seen teamwork? How Naruto and Sasuke synchronized, how Shikamaru and Sasuke understood each other, and Naruto and Shikamaru found the perfect combination in Taijutsu. The Echiha spoke in surprise. I've never seen anything like this before. I think we've seen enough. Hataki jumped from the tree. His comrade followed him. I think that if we really take care of these children, they will have a great future. Something we couldn't achieve. The copy man spoke seriously. Abito hummed in response. The children were truly amazing, the genius Nara, who had no idea about his future life, the reclusive girl Namikaze, and the arrogant boy Echiha were a good team. From the very beginning, their team is obviously built on respect. It's too early to talk about trust, but, undoubtedly, each of them respects their teammates. And in battle they supported each other. They didn't talk too much, they barely talked at all, they had one conversation that Abito couldn't read their lips. When Kakashi and Abito reached the genin, they were no longer sleeping. Sasuke woke everyone up when he intuitively sensed the approach of a shinobi. Naruto and Shikamaru also felt it, but decided not to show it and allowed the Echiha to wake them up. Hi, Abito sensei, Kakashi sensei. The genin said at the same time, without rising from their seats. We've already been waiting for you. Nara chuckled. Kakashi and Abito looked at each other and shrugged. I'll be honest, you made an impression on us. Not only did they show restraint, but their teamwork was excellent. Abito said. I think it's clear that you passed our test with Kakashi. Tomorrow we begin assignments and training. Kakashi inserted the word. Now you can leave. Abito sensei, Kakashi sensei, don't you think this is unfair? We spent the whole day at this training ground, waiting for you, and you gave us a test. Nara said again, lazily drawing out his words. Don't you think we deserve you to do something for us? The Jounin were so shocked that they didn't know what to say. Naruto said this with a calm face, and the Echiha smirked. Shikamaru nodded his head in agreement. And what do you want? Kakashi asked skeptically. Feed us lunch. And we're even. Finished Sasuke. The genin got to their feet and walked towards the exit from the training ground. The mentors followed them, looking at each other in surprise. It seems they will be ruined by their children today. The genins continue to amaze. And what should Abito and Kakashi tell the Hokage? She's in my hands. It was this cry that rang through the village at three o'clock in the afternoon. A second later, Hinata, Shino and Chiji came out to the training ground where team number 10 was training. Behind them, Yoichi and another unknown guy walked with a satisfied look. Apparently the second commander of team number 8. Naruto, honestly, heard his name at the distribution. Although, after scanning his chakra, she realized that he was an Uchiha, their clan's chakra was special to her. In that world, she studied Sasuke and his chakra enough to be able to distinguish between the Shreks of the guy himself and the Shreks of the clan. The Uchiha's chakra was cold, calm and bright. Not like other clans, not at all like that. But even so, Sasuke's chakra was special. The distinctive Shreks of her beloved Uchiha made him stand out from all the others in that world she had met few Sharingan owners, but in this one they were at every step, and they had a whole block. So Naruto had studied enough of the chakra of all the Echihas to say that even here Sasuke stood out, his chakra was cold, dark and more violent. This is what set her apart from others. And Uzumaki loved to feel Sasuke's chakra, in her home world it helped her realize that her Uchiha was alive, that he was next to her. In this world, she helps them realize that they have a second chance, that nothing and no one can separate them. She loved Sasuke's chakra, the way it felt, the way it flared and faded. Naruto loved Sasuke Uchiha. Along with his chakra and his strength. And now, based on her knowledge, Naruto thought with confidence that this second commander of Team 8 was an Uchiha. Only now. Who is this Uchiha? 
We caught the cat. Shuji announced when he saw Team 10 at the training ground. Tora, Madame Shijimi's poor cat, squealed and escaped from Akimichi's arms to run up to Naruto and Shikamaru, who before the other team showed up were training in fire ninjutsu, Kakashi was giving them lessons. She again. Said Sasuke, who was training with Abito, as he approached. The Uchiha was still wary of his mentor, not surprising, given the history of his home world, but he accepted help in mastering the Sharingan. After all, he never had a mentor who could help him in this matter, not that he did poorly without them after all, his eyes were the strongest in the world, but he never learned anything new and useful was not against it. You're jealous, because she loves Naruto and me, not you. Shikamaru snorted. The entire Team 10 shuddered, remembering how they caught her a few days ago. You were too angry. Sasuke is always angry. Naruto said quietly, but everyone heard her. Team 10 hummed in agreement, despite the Echiha's furrowed brows, while the other team looked at everyone in confusion. Yoichi bit his lip and gave his sister an unreadable look. Would you like to take it back to this woman? Shino asked. Surprisingly, in this world he spoke completely normally, without changing words. And he was, as Naruto noticed back at the academy, more open than in that world. No, no. Abito-sensei exclaimed, looking at the cat in horror. This woman almost strangled us when we returned this creature to her. The entire team of eight froze with an expression of pure horror on their faces. Come on, sure sway, it's your turn to experience it. Sure sway? Something familiar. You're so slow on the uptake, Karama growled. Sure sway, Uchiha. Oh Kami, it's sure sway. He's alive here. Naruto glanced at Sasuke, who stood with a grin on his face and clearly did not feel any discomfort. He, noticing her gaze, nodded slightly. Shikamaru handed the cat to Naruto, who immediately began petting it. Yoichi looked at the creature in the hands of the Jinchuriki, with genuine fear, as if he was afraid that she would burn him alive. This look was noticed by both Kakashi and Abito, and Sasuke and Shikamaru. The latter came forward, surprisingly synchronously to protect their teammate. And if the Uchiha's impulses are already clear, he always sought to protect his beloved, then Shikamaru's impulses are less clear. Most likely, he feels responsible for his team, for each of them. There is no denying that in almost two weeks he became attached. They had no difficult missions, only D rank. Weeding fields, washing windows, catching the same cat, walking the dogs of the Inazuka clan, and much more. Kami, they even poisoned cockroaches. Even though the tasks were truly boring and disgusting, but working together with the team, listening to the instructions of the sensei, who were not particularly eager to help, we've already gone through this, we won't sign up for this a second time, Shikamaru joined this atmosphere. They even had a certain regime, they complete all the tasks from the Hokage, and then go to the training ground to train. And it can be different, sometimes missions are exhausting, sometimes they last too long, but sensei always force their students to train. Shikamaru didn't even have time to lie down and look at the clouds. Abito Kuen, you are too cruel to me. What did I do to you? It seemed that there was a friendly relationship between Abito and Shursue. And the following words from the sensei of the tent team convinced Naruto that she was right. Do you remember everything? Or just part? Yoichi, at least support me. Shursue asked pitifully. And you, Jenin? This is for my students. Naruto's brother snorted and the Jenin gulped nervously. Traitors. Because you are evil itself. Kakashi nodded. Abito and Yoichi nodded their heads. Naruto mentally wondered at the overly emotional, yet another. As if Abito wasn't enough Uchiha. I'll complain to Itachi. He won't hurt me. Shursue almost whined. And then he looked at Sasuke. Sasuke Kuen will confirm that I'm being bullied. Don't involve me in this, Shursue san. Sasuke said coldly. Nobody loves me. The Echiha said feigningly. Akimichi mouthed, help, and Yoichi looked again at his sister, who was still petting the cat. 
Hinata, who had been silent all this time, approached Uzumaki and tried to pet Madame Shijimi's favorite. Tora looked at the girl suspiciously, but allowed herself to be stroked. Hyuga smiled timidly at Naruto, to which she responded with a friendly smile. She always liked Hinata. It's time for us to go before Madame Shijimi destroys the residence. Yoichi said. Hinata carefully took the cat from Naruto's hands and walked over to her team. Teammate said goodbye to their comrades. Kakashi and Abido looked after Naruto's brother as the genin resumed their training. Shikamaru made a mental note to talk to his teammate. Everything is fine? Shika asked quietly. Naruto nodded. She is already accustomed to this attitude from her family. How long have you known that Shursui is alive? I asked Naruto a question when he and Sasuke were sitting at their favorite training ground in the evening. The Uchiha lay on his lover's lap, and the girl herself slowly combed through his hair. Sasuke's hair was soft. In his home world, the Uchiha did not immediately open up to Naruto, their relationship at first was similar to friendship. They kissed, they slept together, but there was no real tenderness. Only a year later, Sasuke began to open up and Naruto began to open up in response. Uzumaki learned that the Echiha loved it when she ran through his hair. Sasuke wasn't a tactile person, Naruto realized that right away, but hair was something special to him. The Echiha literally purred as Naruto ran her hands through his hair, fingering it. And he only allowed her to do this, this is how he showed affection. And even after several years of dating, when they began to live together, when almost everyone knew that they were together, Naruto and Sasuke did not show their feelings. None of the people close to them saw how they kissed, how they cared for each other. They could observe their quarrels, their arguments, but everything else. Everything else was personal, intimate, only for two. A few days ago I saw him with Itachi. Sasuke answered. But I know from distribution, when I heard his name. In general, there is very little sure sway in my memories here. I had to dig around for a long time to find something. The boy didn't want to know anything about Itachi's life, so he met his best friend at most twice. We need to find out what's going on here in general. Naruto sighed. Living in the dark all this time is terrible. HM? Sasuke chuckled skeptically. I don't know how we will do this. But it must be done. Naruto sighed. I still need to find the scroll somewhere that will free Kurama. And get to Turtle Island. But that's later, when I've regained my strength. They still need to be restored. Thank you for reminding me. The girl said sarcastically. Contact me. And even though the unknown scares, even though weakness irritates, Naruto and Sasuke are confident that everything will be fine. They don't know what will happen next. They don't know what to do at all. But they'll come up with something. One of the most amazing changes in this world is Kakashi. Naruto and Sasuke were literally speechless when Hitaki arrived at the meeting place on time. They didn't even have to wait for the commander. Seriously, this was a truly amazing event for Naruto, because she believed that even the grave could not fix Kakashi. Was the copy man so influenced by his surviving crew? Another discovery right after the living Abido was Rin Noera, who was an excellent ironine and worked at the hospital. What's even more interesting is that Rin was Abido's wife. They lived together in the center of Kanoha, surprisingly, not in the Echiha quarter, and raised their nine year old son. Hikaru. The Genins knew about the presence of a son, but they had to guess about everything else. Naruto and Sasuke found out about all this completely by accident. Team number 10, together with their senseis, were walking towards the diner to have lunch at the expense of the same senseis, of course, when several academy students came out to meet them. Abido smiled as one of them waved and then walked over to them. This was Hikaru. The boy was surprisingly similar to his father, even his manners and gestures were the same. While father and son were talking, the genin stood calmly next to Kakashi, waiting for them to finish. Kakashi-san Having finished the conversation with his father, Hikaru ran up to Hitaki and hugged him across the torso. 
The Jounin responded by affectionately patting him on the head and smiling. It was noticeable even behind the mask. Why does my son love you more than me? Abito asked thoughtfully. Because I'm much better than you. Hataki chuckled. Hikaru looked thoughtfully at the genin, held his gaze on Naruto, and then turned it to his father. These are my genin, Hikaru. I told you. Abito nodded. Naruto Namakaze, Sasuke Uchiha, and Shikamaru Nara. He pointed to each one in turn. The Jounin son looked at Naruto again and then asked. You're the Hokage's daughter, aren't you? He asked, skeptically. The girl just nodded, surprised by this question. Shikamaru and Sasuke were already preparing to protect their teammate from something unknown, but the boy continued to watch. Naruto resisted the urge to roll her eyes and raise an eyebrow, in response, she simply stared with mild interest in her eyes. This is exactly the scene that the woman who approached found her. Ka Chan. The boy switched to his mother. The woman smiled at her husband, kissed Kakashi on the exposed part of his face, and patted her son on the top of his head. Rin. Expensive. Abito exclaimed. Naruto and Sasuke stopped thinking coherently, the Uchiha size increased in size for a second, and the Uzumaki sighed heavily. What kind of Shrek is going on in this world? This is how the offworlders learned that Minato's entire team was alive, that they were living quite happily in this world, and that Kakashi had stopped being late. Another shock was that Kakashi actually teaches. Daily training, practice, a little theory, Hataki perfectly helps Naruto and Shikamaru in mastering ninjutsu. Although Kakashi owned the wind, he did not know the techniques that Naruto did not know but the elements of fire and earth, the latter for Shikamaru, were very useful. A week after the distribution, Kakashi and Abito conducted a test and found out which elements predominated in children. Naruto was not at all surprised to learn about her elements of fire and wind, Sasuke received his favorite fire and lightning, and Shika received fire and earth. And the sensei was not surprised, they saw it all. But Naruto and Sasuke's predisposition to the third element came as a surprise to the captains. Few shinobi could show a predisposition to more than two elements, but children, of course, as always, surprise. Naruto and Sasuke gained the element of water. Kakashi said that it was too early to master the third the genin agreed with him, so they only took on the two main ones. Sasuke simultaneously developed his eyes, and Naruto, secretly from everyone except the Echiha, developed Fuinjutsu. Gradually she increased her sensory abilities. Abito did not forget to train the team for endurance, just as he did not forget about Taijutsu. Overall, after three months of hard work, team number 10 achieved great results. This was confirmed by the sparring that the sensei arranged at the end of the third month. During this time, Naruto, Sasuke, and Shikamaru became a real team, which they showed during the fight with Kakashi. Uzumaki and Echiha had been feeling each other for a long time, but Shikamaru had to join in. Although this was not difficult. He fell into the rhythm of the couple with surprising ease. Their work was coordinated, almost synchronous. The ideal team is still very, very far away, but they are clearly on the way to it. Genin techniques have become better. There are more of them. While Naruto and Sasuke had long been seasoned ANBU mentally, their current bodies were anything but. They spent a lot of time making their bodies better, stronger. There is still a lot of work to do. The sensei was pleased with the results of their work, which they saw after the sparring. The genin took the criticism adequately, together they sorted out mistakes both on the part of the jounin and on the part of the students, discussed the results and thought through the further concept of training. The children showed themselves to be mature shinobi, ready to develop, learn from mistakes, and most importantly, admit them. Sasuke Kuen A synchronized squeak came from both sides when the Echiha, Uzumaki, and Nara left the residence. They had just handed over a mission to the Hokage, and their captains remained there to resolve some issues. Naruto suspected that Minato was interrogating Kakashi and Abito but she had absolutely no idea what they were telling the Hokage. There was no doubt that her father was keeping an eye on her through the sensei, 
but Naruto could only guess about what the man was hearing. Sasuke said that if Minato had not yet carried out any checks, established surveillance, kicked her out of the house or sent her somewhere else for some kind of interrogation, then everything was not as bad as it could be. Naruto, of course, does not stand out, her behavior is adequate, the fox does not rage, thank you, Kurama. But she achieved great success in her development and became stronger. Will Minato like this fact? Sasuke Kuen. Two girlish voices sounded again, but closer. The Echiha continued to walk with his face as calm as possible. Naruto and Shikamaru looked at each other and snorted quietly. A second later, two well known girls appeared in front of the Genin, Sakura, and Ino. The ladies looked at the Echiha with admiring eyes, their hearts almost danced there. It had been several months since Naruto had last seen Sakura, they had not met since the sorting. Haruno hasn't changed at all, at first glance. We haven't seen each other for so long, Sasuke Kuen. Sakura spoke. At second glance, the impression is the same. Shikamaru looked phlegmatically at Ino and Sakura, nervously shifting from foot to foot. Naruto mentally laughed at her lover, and Kurama grinned disgustingly inside. He always liked seeing Sasuke suffer. Ino, Sakura. They heard another familiar voice. So Kiba appeared in front of them. I'm looking for you everywhere. Sasuke, how are you? Ino stammered, completely ignoring her teammate. Hmm, the Echiha answered. Team 10 and Team 7 stood opposite each other. Nobody dared to leave. Girls, I'm here. Inazuka said nervously. We see you, Kiba. You only see Echiha. Naruto is ready to swear that Sasuke is in favor of not being seen. Maybe we can leave here? Shikamaru asked quietly, phlegmatically examining the clouds. Team number 7 was clearly not to his liking if at that time Nara communicated quite warmly with the team of Yoichi and Shirsue, then he had no desire to communicate with this team. Yes, with pleasure. Naruto said just as quietly, making Shirku smile. Sasuke, we have to go. This was already in the direction of his lover. She had to suppress the urge to be sarcastic in order to say all this in a quiet and calm voice. Don't interfere, Naruto. How can you be so disrespectful to Sasuke Kuen? Sakura was indignant. Uzumaki tried her best not to be rude to this upstart and expose herself. This Haruno was an extremely annoying and noisy person, Naruto had long been unaccustomed to such Sakura. Sakura, watch your words. Shikamaru entered the conversation. He deliberately drew out his words slowly, knowing how infuriating it was for everyone. Shikamaru, Ino began, but was interrupted by the Echiha. He's right, take better care of yourself. The girls looked at him with bulging eyes. How did you become a shinobi if you can't even conduct a normal dialogue? Naruto again suppressed the urge to laugh, because hearing such words from Sasuke was strange, to say the least. The Echiha always acted according to the principle, first fight, then talk. Therefore, the words about the ability to conduct dialogues were very funny. Let me pass. With these words, team number 10 left towards the training grounds, leaving the other team standing with dumbfounded faces. More and more interesting. Sasuke, wait. The Echiha didn't have time to leave the house when his father's voice stopped him. Fugaku was sitting in the living room, so Sasuke sighed heavily and went there. Did something happen, Odo-san? The Echiha asked calmly. During the time he lived in this world, Sasuke learned not to react to his family. More precisely, on its individual representatives, Itachi and his father. And if he sincerely wanted to talk with Itachi and improve relations, then Sasuke didn't really want to deal with Fugaku. His brother was too smart, so he might suspect something if the younger one fell in love with him. Sasuke established relationships gradually if in the first few weeks, the Uchiha had to constantly snort, sneer, grunt, and snap in contempt, now he simply passes by his brother in the house, but sometimes they exchange greetings. Sasuke spoke to Fugaku several times. 
His father still didn't see him, didn't notice, or simply didn't want to do it. The Echiha, too, now did not seek to prove anything to his father, to rise in his eyes, this is an absolutely useless activity, the otherworlder decided. It would be better for him to simply live, learn, develop, and, when necessary, his father himself will see his strength. I found a bride for you, Sasuke. Oto-san said unexpectedly, but the Echiha remained unperturbed. He raised one eyebrow, but said nothing, waiting for him to continue. As soon as you turn 16, I will marry you to a member of the Hyuga clan. This is a very beneficial alliance to strengthen relations between clans. And Sasuke was slowly boiling inside. He did not intend to marry any Hyuga, for him there is only one girl, only Naruto has always existed and will always exist. Sasuke had no intention of betraying his beloved, but his anger at his father was about to burst out. His father is using him as a guarantor of the union of clans. He does not intend to tolerate this attitude towards himself. With these words, Fugaku literally trampled the genin into the dirt and humiliated him. Fugaku did not take into account his opinion at all, the fact that he was a person. Is this how you have to treat a child in order to place him under the Hyuga clan? I will not do it. Sasuke interrupted his father. Nobody is asking you. Your brother, father began. I said I won't marry anyone, Otu-san. You will do what I said, Sasuke. He saw his father boiling, his anger literally boiling inside. And Sasuke did too. But both Uchihas behaved with dignity and did not show their emotions. No, I'm not a bargaining chip for you. You live in my house, you are my son. You are an Uchiha. Fugaku raised his voice. Did you remember that I am your son? Marvelous. Sasuke answered without emotion. It's precisely because I'm an Uchiha that I won't allow my pride, my life to be trampled into the dirt, Oto-san. And don't worry, after the Chunin exam I will leave the village. I will no longer flash before your eyes, and you will be able to fully devote yourself to the clan and your eldest son. What you said? Fugaku asked, coldly. You heard everything, Fugaku-san. Sasuke said calmly, and then turned around and left the room. Naruto will be furious when he hears this story. What did he say? As Sasuke suspected, Uzumaki was simply incredibly angry. She literally growled, and a rather strong key, flavored with the fox's chakra, emanated from her. Calm down, now everyone will come running to release chakra. Of course, this did not help calm the girl, but she removed the key. I said that after the Chinin exam I would leave the village. I've been thinking about doing this for a long time, but I don't know how to do it yet. You won't become a Nukmin again. The Echiha said gloomily. How could Fugaku do this to his own son? For him, only Itachi always existed. I'll leave with you. Said Naruto. I won't leave you here. I didn't reject Uzumaki Sasuke. All that remained was to figure out how to do all this, and not become Nikonins, we know, we already tried, it all ended in tears. Naruto knows that Jiraiya in this world is her beloved godfather, but just like in his home world, he is traveling around the world. However, this time Tsunade, Naruto's beloved godmother and the wife of the Toad Sanin himself, is with him. The Uzumaki has no idea whether this couple will come to Kanoha but for now they are the only option to leave the village legally. Naruto last saw Jiraiya and Tsunade about six years ago, when things weren't as bad as they are now. The Senju couple loved their goddaughter very much, they protected her, always brought gifts, and did not despise or avoid her. Naruto just hoped that nothing had changed and that they would return to Kanoha at all. Soon, Shikamaru approached the usual training ground of Team 10, and Naruto realized that she did not want to leave this man here alone, without a team. If he and Sasuke leave, then Shika will be left without support, left alone. The Uzumaki had to admit that Nara had become an incredibly close friend to her, even though they barely spoke. She felt a special connection with him, not as deep as with the Echiha, but just as strong. Even Sasuke began to open up to Shikamaru. They played shogi together, discussed plans and strategies, Naruto also joined them sometimes. 
Often, Shikamaru and Sasuke would fight together, and then discuss the weaknesses of each of them. But for Shikamaru to go with them, Naruto had to trust him completely. There should be no secrets, no secrets, Shikamaru should know everything. But is the boy ready for this? Is Naruto ready to tell the whole truth? Is Sasuke ready? There were a lot of questions, a lot of secrets, a lot of riddles. Uzumaki could not yet imagine what to do with this. What's wrong with you today? Nara asked phlegmatically when he lay down under a tree after sparring. Naruto and Sasuke fought harder than usual today. Shikamaru was very tired of fending off Sasuke's taijutsu and avoiding Naruto's ninjutsu. Come on, tell me, I see that something is wrong. You almost fried me. Problems in the clan. The Echiha growled. They want to marry you, right? Shikamaru asked lazily, and Uzumaki was once again amazed at his intuition and intelligence. I recently heard my father talking to Hyuga Hayashi. I refused. You could say that we had a very big fight. Sasuke said more calmly, sitting down under a tree near Shiki. Naruto climbed onto a branch right above them. What are you going to do? I don't know yet, but I won't allow myself to get married. Sasuke chuckled. Don't be afraid, Naruto, and I won't give you up. Nara said cheerfully. The Uzumaki hooted an agreement from above. Now it's time for us to go to the residence. Abito doesn't like being late. Said Naruto. Again, rank D missions. I can no longer see these fields, these dogs, cats. Look, they'll send us into the sewer now, just like team number 8 recently. This will be fun. The Echiha quipped. We've already been in the attics, it's time to go lower. The girl said sadly, and Nara chuckled at her words. Soon the team found themselves near the Hokage's residence. Kakashi and Abido were already standing there, waiting for their genin. The Echiha beamed as if he had just been promoted to Hokage, and Hitaki looked at his friend with a mixture of amusement and understanding in his eyes. The rest of the genin's face, for obvious reasons, was not seen, but they could swear that Kakashi was smiling. I'm so proud of you, children. Shikamaru could not contain the horror in his eyes when Abito ran towards him. Naruto didn't have time to react before she found herself in the captain's arms. Kakashi slowly walked over to his team and patted his friend on the back. Abito, let the poor girl go. He said. When the Uchiha turned his gaze to the other two, Shikamaru and Sasuke, seeing the manic gleam in the sensei's eyes, wisely took a step back. However, this did not save Sasuke, and he ended up in Abito's arms. Kakashi-sensei, what's going on? She asked Naruto a question because, obviously, her teammates were too disoriented by the attention from the strong man. Have your hormones risen? Naruto thought. In response to her remark, Kurama's loud laughter rang out in his head. Abito is very happy. Hataki answered laconically. It's not that we didn't understand it, the girl said quietly. Abito-sensei? Maybe you can let us go? Naruto asked timidly. Please? Oh, how glad I am, how proud I am! Sensei exclaimed, releasing Naruto. The girl quickly jumped closer to Shikamaru, while Sasuke, with his trademark stone face, continued to stand in the arms of his sensei. I will remember this moment for the rest of my life. Naruto said sarcastically to Kurama, mentally enjoying this picture. Obviously, Sasuke was not too happy with the situation, because as I began to twitch little by little, Kurama was still laughing. Of course, it always makes him happy to see Sasuke suffer. Kakashi-sensei, has Abito-sensei always been so, loving? Asked Shikamaru. Oh, children, it's finally happened. Abito exclaimed, releasing the Echiha. Sasuke, keeping his cool, jumped away from his commander and stood next to Shikamaru, straightening his clothes. We worked tirelessly for many months. Yeah, we. Team 10 looked at each other, clearly expressing their skepticism. Maybe they worked, but their sensei calmly did not participate in any missions. 
And so, the Hokage decided that we deserve a reward. Hokage-sama gave us a C-rank mission. Abito finished solemnly. There was silence. Shikamaru, Naruto, and Sasuke surprisingly simultaneously raised their right eyebrows, Kakashi shook his head. And their other sensei continued to beam. Well, Shikamaru began. Obviously, this news has greatly excited you, Abito-sensei. Certainly. The Hokage finally realized that we are worthy. Naruto happily decided not to remind Abito that he was the jonin of the village and C-rank mission should excite him no more than cleaning the sewer. Happy for us. Shikamaru said indifferently. Of course, they were tired of D-rank missions every day, but none of the genin shared such ardent enthusiasm. Abito continued to talk about how proud he is of his genin, about how great they are, about what results they have achieved. Kakashi sighed heavily, looked condescendingly at his friend and turned his gaze to the genin. We leave in three hours. We'll tell you about the mission on the way. Hataki said briefly. The juniors of Team 10 nodded and looked at Abito skeptically. He will calm down for the mission. Naruto, Sasuke, and Shikamaru shrugged. They said goodbye to the Jounin and went home to pack their things. I hope it calms down. Apparently, Abito was really proud of the team's achievements. Naruto came home at an unusual time for her. She tried to come as late as possible in order to have less contact with her beloved family. Usually she was in time for dinner, which was about 7 o'clock. Well, or 8. Depending on what time Minato arrived. Naruto always scanned the house for the Hokage's chakra before entering it. So she knew what she needed to be prepared for. If Minato was at home, then Naruto would simply silently go to the table, have dinner, and go to her room, if Minato was not there, then Naruto immediately went to her room, and came down only when she heard the sound of cutlery hitting the plate. So now she scanned the house and found, surprisingly, Yoichi and Kushina. Why her brother wasn't with his team, Naruto had no idea. She quietly walked into the house, trying to get into her room unnoticed. But, of course, her attempt was unsuccessful, Kushina noticed the girl. Naruto? Kachan exclaimed in surprise. Yoichi, who was sitting next to her on the sofa, stopped reading the scroll and looked up at his sister. Hi, Kachan, and I san Naruto said quietly, nodding her head. The actress in you is dying, Uzumaki. Shut the door. Naruto almost growled, to which Kurama only snorted. You are early today. I'm leaving on a mission, I came to get my things. The girl said briefly, intending to leave. But then her brother's voice stopped her. Rank C? Yes, and I san Said Naruto. She did not listen any further to her brother and, without even looking at the family, went up to her room to pack her things. Uzumaki began to walk around the room, collecting what she needed, she took all her kunai, sealing scrolls, a small medical kit that she had created recently, there was no Irayanin on their team, so they had to come up with something. She also took some scrolls to study, a sleeping bag, a blanket, and a flask of water, which she had to go downstairs to get. She also didn't forget about dry rations for the whole team, which she had long ago, started collecting. She sealed all this in four scrolls, and they, in turn, put them in her backpack. When Naruto discovered all the secret places in the room, she was simply delighted. Not only was there a secret place under the floorboard, but also in the closet and under the bed, where there were also recesses. In the desk drawer, Uzumaki also discovered a secret compartment, where there was a rather impressive warehouse of kunai. Naruto even told Sasuke about this, to which he only snorted and said that normal shinobi all do this. Only you stood out, of course, Naruto. When did you start making places like this in our house? To which Uzumaki chuckled in the best Uchiha style and said. Why did I have to do this if I had you? You set traps and secret places all over the house. The Uchiha couldn't find anything to answer to this, so he just rolled his eyes. When Naruto finished getting ready, there were about 40 minutes left, before the appointed time. They were supposed to meet near the Kanoha gates, 
walk there, for about ten minutes. So the Uzumaki had time to eat something before the road. She would eat a bowl, or two, of ramen now, but then she would be late for the meeting. And there are no sensei to pay for lunch at a Chiraku. Naruto sighed heavily and went downstairs, grabbing her backpack. Yoichi and Kushina were already sitting in the kitchen having lunch. They even set out a plate for Naruto. The girl put her backpack near the chair and sat down in her place. Where's your team today? Kushina asked her son. There was tension and awkwardness at the table. This didn't happen when Minato was home. Shursui decided to show them something special. Yoichi snorted. He told me to come at about three o'clock. And how is your team in general? Capable children, but their teamwork is not very good. Yoichi winced. Let's have dinner. Let's assemble your team. Kushina smiled. And Naruto's team. She turned an awkward glance at her daughter. Kakashi and Abito will be happy to have dinner with us. Do you have a good team, Naruto? Good, Ka-chan. The girl answered evenly, surprised at her mother's talkativeness at dinner. Obviously, she wanted to dilute the tense atmosphere that reigned at the table. When you return from your mission, invite them to dinner with us. I am sure this will benefit your teamwork, because you must not only understand each other, but also trust. Kushina said instructively, and Naruto chose not to say that everything is fine with their teamwork. Okay, Ka-chan. Naruto finished her lunch, put the cutlery on the table, and stood up. Thank you, I have to go. She took her backpack, hung it on her shoulders, and, bowing slightly towards her mother, went to the door. Naruto, be careful. Kushina said quietly. Control yourself, okay? These words from her brother literally drove her crazy. Kurama inside also began to be indignant. Do they think she'll kill someone on a mission? Don't worry, I won't kill anyone. Naruto said indifferently and left the house. Her family will just get her there. When Sasuke came home, he discovered that his father was not there, and his mother was cooking something in the kitchen. He quickly went to his room and collected all the necessary things in a small backpack, kunai, sleeping bag, water flask, and so on. I absolutely didn't want to meet any of Sasuke's relatives. He was sure that Makoto knew everything perfectly about his father's desire to marry him to Hyuga, he did not want to meet his father for obvious reasons, and Itachi. Itachi is Itachi. However, Sasuke's wish was not destined to come true, because Makoto caught him on the stairs. I'm leaving on a mission, Ka-chan. He told her. Rank C? The woman raised her eyebrows. Yes. Go eat first, I won't leave you hungry. The woman said sternly. I won't eat, Ka-chan. The guy said firmly and walked around his mother. I am late. That was, of course, a lie, because he still had about an hour. But he knew that Itachi and his father should come to dinner, and Sasuke did not want to sit at the same table with them. Stop acting like this, and sit down at the table. He heard Itachi's voice behind him as he approached the door. You shouldn't care about my life at all, Nai-san. Sasuke said firmly. He didn't understand how his older brother could be calm about the fact that they were trying to use his younger brother as a bargaining chip. And what Itachi knew, he was 100% sure, Fugaku could not help but tell the heir about the lucrative deal. Sasuke, calm down. Itachi frowned. You know very well that this is necessary for the future of the clan. And here is confirmation of his speculations Itachi knows very well about his father's desire to marry him to Hyuga. Only the Echiha did not understand at all what happened to Itachi in this world. Would Itachi do this in his home world? He would have followed his father's lead, justifying the destruction of his younger brother's life as the good of the clan. Nisan had always been a complex person and Sasuke realized that he had never really known him. You are the future head of the clan, why don't you do it? The Echiha sighed heavily. Sasuke himself would have left long ago and would not have started to sort things out with his older brother, but it was necessary to maintain the image of the local boy. 
there is very little left. Because I have a girlfriend, Sasuke. And you know the Uchiha clan we love once. Itachi reported. The Uchiha wondered, who is his Nii San's chosen one? It even became interesting. What if I'm in love too? Asked a question to Sasuke. You can't be in love. Of course, I'm a stupid little brother, why should I care about you? I cannot even experience simple human feelings, the same way as you. Sasuke chuckled. What are you talking about? Mikoto started, but she couldn't finish. You're not in love, Sasuke. It's a lie. Check it out. The younger Uchiha still spoke indifferently. Sasuke. I said everything, and I I san. I don't intend to get married. I will not tolerate this attitude towards my life. I've suffered enough in this family. You will not control my life and play on my feelings. You are betraying your clan. Itachi, always reserved, almost lost his temper. Sasuke saw his eyes light up for a moment, but his brother, quickly put it away. Mikoto, standing nearby, was tensely biting her lips, having absolutely no idea what to do. But I'm not betraying myself, Nii-san. Sasuke sealed it. And what are you doing? With these words, he left the house, not forgetting his backpack. The Uchiha knew that Itachi would think about his words. And he suspected that the heir would come to talk later, this was a chance to really change something in his relationship with his brother. Sasuke wanted Itachi to remember who he was. That he is not just the heir of the clan, but also the elder brother, the eldest son, the jounin of the village and just a good person. The father completely took over the life of his eldest son. Itachi was a genius, but he didn't realize that he was missing out on himself due to Fugaku's enormous pressure. When Sasuke arrived at the meeting place, Shikamaru was already there. He was reclining near a tree next to the gate and dozing. Nara opened his eyes when the young owner of the Sharingan approached and nodded to him. The Echiha settled down next to him and also closed his eyes. A few minutes later he felt a man approaching. Opening his eyes, Sasuke saw Naruto, who threw her backpack next to his and Shikamaru's backpacks. The girl was clearly furious, but held on. She nodded her head as Shika opened his eyes. How much time do we have? Asked Naruto. About twenty minutes. Sasuke answered. Naruto sat down next to him, hands lightly touching. She will definitely tell you everything later. Like the Echiha, he will share the latest news. Now they will take a breath and tune into the mission. You are already here. Abito smiled when he and Kakashi approached the gates of Kanoha, exactly twenty minutes later. A strange-looking woman and child walked next to them. The boy was about nine years old, he was holding tightly to his mother's hand, probably. Hi, Abito-sensei, Kakashi-sensei. The genin said synchronously, but did not approach the sensei. You never know. Our task, to bring Mrs. Iam and her son Akira, to the land of tea. Mrs. Iam is a famous artist who presented her exhibition in the land of fire. Kakashi said. The children simultaneously greeted the woman and her son, to which they smiled at them. Naruto hoped that the first mission in this world would not have such adventures as in that one. Naruto has been to the land of tea several times. The first was with Team 7 when they were guarding I-8. It was a difficult mission that almost ended in disaster, but the guys did it. The second time she was here with Jiraiya was during a trip, the Sanin was looking for inspiration, so they wandered into this small country. Once again it was at the invitation of the same Idate after the war. The boy grew up, got married, and had a son. Naruto and Sasuke were at his wedding, and then Uzumaki was alone on the way from one mission she dropped in for a visit. This was the last time she saw Idate. As far as Naruto remembered and she remembered well. The country of tea was a small country. There were many trees growing in it, there was high humidity, as well as fog and rain. This country was named so because there were small tea houses scattered everywhere, team number 7 stayed in one of these. 
Another interesting thing is that the country is located on two islands, Naruto remembers the race in which each of these islands was involved. While the genin walked towards the land of tea, the woman artist talked about her work, and her little son found a common language with Abito. Honestly, no one from team number 10 was surprised by this fact. Mrs. Iam talked about the fact that she is known not only in her country, but also abroad, more than 300 people came to the exhibition in the land of fire. The woman loved to draw and sculpt sculptures, and Akira also followed in his mother's footsteps, the boy showed interest in drawing. The teachers at his school speak very highly of him and say that he has talent. Of course, Mrs. Iam was very proud of her son. In general, the artist was a positive person. She entertained the entire crew on the first day of the journey, telling stories while they sat around the fire at night and on the second day of the journey. Her son was a rather modest child. He didn't talk much, mostly talking to Abito and Shikamaru. Akira, as they learned from himself, besides drawing, also loved music. He sings and dances very well. Shinobi had to make stops quite often, because ordinary people were not adapted to this kind of travel. Ayam and Akira were tired, so the group took a break every four hours. Sometimes Akira rode on the back of Kakashi or Abido. When the break came, Naruto scanned the area for the presence of Shinobi. Out of habit, so to speak. Then the genin with Abito or Kakashi went to train, and the rest prepared lunch or just rested. The group walked at this pace for three days. And everything would have been fine if on the morning of the fourth day, when they were approaching the land of tea, Naruto had not felt the shinobi approaching them. Kurama, having also discovered them, said that their level is not higher than that of Chunin, they have little chakra, but they are serious. Judging by how tense Kakashi and Abito were, they also saw or felt something. Sasuke and Shikamaru were wary, the first scanned the area with his Sharingan, and the second stood closer to Akira and Ayama. The attack occurred five minutes later. Two Chunin from an unknown village attacked the group from behind. Naruto and Sasuke, who brought up the rear of the group, simultaneously threw their kunai and then disappeared into the white fog. Clones. Abido said quietly, pushing the customers behind himself and Kakashi. Before the two Chunin knew it, the genin appeared behind them. They were bound hand and foot by Shikamaru's shadows, and Naruto gave one of them the seal of oblivion, he fell to the ground and passed out. Naruto also blocked this Chunin's chakra. The second one was able to escape from Shikamaru's technique. The Chunin jumped up and climbed the tree, but even then he made a mistake. Sasuke and Shikamaru launched a fire technique at him from both sides, which Naruto fanned with the wind. A bright flame engulfed the tree on which the shinobi was sitting, so he had to jump down. As soon as his feet touched the ground, he launched water bullets at the genin. Sasuke left as a replacement, Shikamaru blocked the technique with the elements of the earth. Naruto made several seals, and a transparent wall appeared in front of her, the simplest defensive Hyuinjutsu technique. The bullets hit the wall, and the water then spread across the ground. When the Chunin stopped firing bullets, Naruto lowered the wall and Shikamaru dispelled the technique. Two genin simultaneously launched a stream of fire at the Chunin but did not hit him, but the branch above him. Then the Chunin made another mistake, he looked up. The branch undoubtedly burned beautifully, but the Uchiha's eyes burned even more beautifully, when the shinobi lowered his eyes, he saw Sasuke in front of him. His tomo swirled in his eyes, and the Chunin, caught in a jinjutsu, passed out. Well, not bad. Abito commented as both enemies were tied up and planted near a tree. What did you do to him, Naruto? He nodded at one of the chunin. I fell into a little sleep. The seal will disappear in about five minutes. Uzumaki answered calmly. I guess that's not all you know about Fuinjutsu. Kakashi chuckled, approaching her. Not all. I didn't lie to Naruto. What about the second one? Asked Akira who approached. Sasuke put him in a jinjutsu said Shikamaru. I don't know what he made him watch, but the guy obviously didn't like it, he switched off. Just plunged him into his own nightmare. Sasuke shrugged. 
well, who are these people? Abito asked a logical question, addressing the client. Mrs. Iam sighed heavily and began the story. Everything that was previously said to her was the pure truth. Only she kept silent about the fact that she is the mother of Jirocho's grandson, the head of the Wasabi clan, 